Relationships are viewed as mutual bonds between two individuals, such as a parent-child relationship or a peer relationship. Relationship building is the process of establishing emotional connections with others, starting from birth, which are based on trust and intimacy. Through relationships, individuals discover who they are and learn to understand others. When young children experience individuals helping, understanding, and enjoying them, they approach the world with openness and enthusiasm, and they grow to be responsive and caring people. Individuals can choose to develop positive, supportive relationships or negative, destructive relationships. Learning to distinguish between the two and avoid the latter has the potential to increase feelings of self-worth, enjoyment, and growth. When I think about a healthy relationship, I think about someone who is um, committed to that relationship, to the other relationships that they have, um, whether it be a romantic or whether it be just a platonic relationship, someone that's invested. Um, I think about healthy relationships having trust and good communication and um, a certain level of independence so that you're not clingy and you're not dependent on that other person for your own happiness or your own temperament, I guess. Um, unhealthy, I think of manipulative, cheating, lying, someone that's not super independent, someone that maybe doesn't have your best intentions at heart, tends to generate a more unhealthy relationship, bad, poor communication. I hate to say bullying in the relationship, but someone, who, someone that takes advantage of someone would be unhealthy. Typically, families exert the most powerful influences on an individual's life. It is within the family that children learn about building relationships. Children who experience warm, responsible, and trusting relationships are better able to manage their feelings and cope with the ups and downs of life. Regardless of whom a person lives with, the family environment can be a strong source for developing adolescence, providing close relationships, strong parenting skills, good communication, modeling positive behaviors, and learning how to establish and maintain positive relationships. Your family is a lot of times the people that are modeling to you what kind of relationships you should be in and what's appropriate and what's not and what you should expect and what's not okay. And so they have your parents and your guardians and your brothers and sisters have such an opportunity to show you um, what a healthy relationship could be and uh, kind of get you on the right track. Because families play such a large role in how individuals manage relationships, an individual's family culture is often evident when examining their relationships outside of the family. Family culture is defined as the norms, roles, rules, customs, understandings, and expectations of family employees. For example, if an individual grows up in a very close-knit family, chances are that individual will have close-knit relationships outside of the family. In addition, parents who display good relationship skills show their children how to relate to people outside of the family in a positive way. This contributes to the children's ability to develop their own relationship management skills. Family culture and the expectations and rules a family has are impacted by society. Families from different regions are more likely to have different family dynamics because cultural patterns affect family relationships. Positive relationships look different in different cultures, and what would be considered a positive relationship in one culture may not be considered ideal in another. For example, the Chinese culture emphasizes on respect for authority and devotion to parents and elderly. Therefore, parent-child relationships are more hierarchical when compared to American parent-child relationships. Healthy family cultures contribute to healthy family relationships by reinforcing positive values and habits. Understanding cultural beliefs is an important part of building positive relationships within and outside of the family. In addition, peer relationships play a large part in growing up. Peers exert powerful socialization influences and pressures to conform. The impact these relationships have can either be positive or negative. Individuals can develop positive relationships with their peers by spending time together, participating in shared interests, and working toward common goals. Children profit from experience relating to peers because peers have interests and skills which broaden an individual. The right peers can reinforce positive values and enhance the entire process of growing up. However, 
Peer relationships also have the potential to encourage problems, such as unhealthy and unsafe behaviors. Understanding how to manage negative peer relationships is very important. So peer pressure isn't always a bad thing. Sometimes your peers can get you to do things that you might not think that you're capable of in a positive way, like encouraging you to um, try harder at school or go out for a team or club or maybe just taking a, a healthy risk that you normally might not take and they give you that little boost. Um, I think especially in high school and middle school, there is a tendency for peers to be more... Um, not always, but to have a bigger impact on the negative side of peer pressure. I think it's it's easy for teens to kind of sometimes negatively impact their friends because they're projecting their own issues onto them or they, they want to live through their friends and so they're getting them to do things that other people aren't really necessarily comfortable with. It's fun to break the rules sometimes and it's fun to see how much you can get away with and how far you can take something. So I think um, friends, especially peers, have a big opportunity to be more corrupt than, than healthy and positive peer pressure if it's not, if you're picking the wrong types of friends. I think maybe choosing people that are like you or people that have similar interests when you're looking for friends, or maybe if there's qualities that you don't have that you enjoy in other people that are healthy, seeking out those kind of people. Um, maybe having a wide variety of interests so that you're meeting different kinds of people, whether it be at church or at um, sports events or in your school band or anything like that. Um, it's just a great way to kind of diversify your friendship group so that you don't feel like you just have five friends and they're all from this group and they may, may or may not be the best influence. So just maybe a, a diverse group of friends. As adolescents and adults, dating relationships can help individuals discover themselves and learn about people in a variety of settings. Dating helps an individual understand and value healthy relationships. These types of relationships lead to maturity in adolescence and a better understanding of adult relationships. Individuals learn to set boundaries, communicate with people, and learn relationship management strategies. Dating helps an individual choose a partner that may lead to marriage. I feel like when you're dating, when you start to date, you you decide um, what qualities that you're looking for in someone, and the more you date, the more you kind of fine-tune what you're looking for, maybe in a marriage someday or in a long-term relationship, and so I think dating plays an important role in um, kind of helping you decide what you want, what you don't want, what's healthy and what's not. It's just, it's great life experience and especially the older you get I think the more you you learn and the more you tend to date people hopefully that are a good match for you sometimes having a significant other or, or boyfriend or girlfriend can um, maybe give you like an optimism or be more hopeful about things or be kind of excited about life and kind of, kind of perk you up um, it can maybe be a negative thing if you're spending all this time with a new uh, boyfriend or girlfriend and suddenly you're not available for your family and friends and they're kind of jealous or upset about that or they don't understand why you are not spending as much time with them as you used to. Developing and maintaining a healthy relationship or marriage requires several components to be successful. These components include respect, honesty and trust, friendship and appreciation, respecting boundaries and expectations, sharing and contributing to goals, as well as communication skills. Both partners must be willing to spend time and energy building these skills and improving their relationship. Doing what you say you're going to do, uh, giving, respecting people and giving people their space when they need it, not being clingy, um, really listening to people. I know that kind of goes with communication, being an active listener and putting that person at least at the same level as you consider yourself, so if not, maybe a little bit more, um, just trying to be the person for them that you would want someone to be for you. If any of these components are not present, it can lead to a strain in the relationship. Challenges in the relationship include managing expectations, communicating effectively, making compromises, 
showing appreciation and gratitude, and mixing families. Overcoming these challenges may be achieved through listening and understanding, being willing to forgive and let go, believing in the importance of the relationship, seeking guidance and counseling, and communicating openly. Many people take the act of communicating for granted. Communication is vital in creating and maintaining relationships, whether it be an intimate relationship, such as with a partner, child, or friend, or a professional relationship, such as a co-worker, client, or employee. Good communication among all relationships consists of sharing emotions, feelings, ideas, information, and thoughts. A lack of communication may result in confusion, misunderstandings, and the development of poor communication patterns, which can create resentment and tension. Communication is a big piece of the foundation for a successful relationship. Open and honest communication is fundamental to fostering couple satisfaction and is an important element of a healthy family unit. In order to effectively communicate, an individual should become an engaged listener by focusing fully on the speaker, paying attention to nonverbal signs such as facial expressions, body movement, and gestures, being aware of and in control of their emotions, as well as expressing their thoughts, feelings, and needs in an open and honest way. Creating meaningful relationships is often about sharing our lives with others, and technology can allow us to do so through photos, videos, and text. Technology offers more diverse and constant communication with peers and partners. It gives individuals a larger dating pool, allows for connection between long-lost friends, and it permits families who are geographically separated to keep in touch. I'm, I'm the product of an um, internet marriage. I mean, we met online, and I just think as time goes along, it'll be more and more um, part of the norm. I know even as much as five or ten years ago, there was more of a stigma to it, and that stigma is kind of becoming less. But I think when used properly, it can be a really great tool for meeting someone. You do have to be extra careful about people not being honest with you or telling you things that aren't true and, you know, catfishing, as they call it, uh, these days. But you just have to kind of be aware of people online just as you would be aware of them if you were meeting them in person. Um, but I think more and more with texting and Facebook and Twitter and just every, you know, Tinder, all those, there's all kinds of things right now that you can get on to meet people. I don't see that going away. While technology can enhance communication, it can also be a source of social isolation. Many people tend to not verbally communicate anymore, as they choose to use technology to communicate for them. This has affected interaction with others and has affected quality time with family and friends. Technology also has the ability to change the clarity of the messages individuals are trying to convey. The lazy approach of technology has led to a decrease in the amount of effort put into reading and writing. All your communication should not be written, like through text or emails. I think it's really important that you still make time um, to have phone conversations and to have ample time to, you know, go on dates and meet in person and um, not... I think things get misconstrued sometimes when you're texting or um, emailing, and so I think that's really important that you still have the FaceTime. 